Facts First presents The real Noah's Ark may have just been uncovered, and it's throwing people off guard. There's a text in many ancient cultures around the world about a massive worldwide flood and one man on a massive ship who waited out the storm. The most famous story, of course, is in the Bible and the Quran. It's the story of Noah's Ark. The holy texts weren't the only time Noah has been mentioned, though. The first story comes from Mesopotamia, and the man was called Zayasudra. Later, it was a Babylonian story, and the man was named Gilgamesh. However, Noah is the most popular. The story of Noah begins when God tells him to build an ark. He's told to make sure the ark is large enough to fit himself, his family, and two of every animal in the world. This was God's way of ensuring life would go on after the worldwide flood. It's said that God wanted to flood the earth because of the sins being committed. He believed that humans were flawed, and flooding the earth would give them a chance to start over. Since Noah was a good, God-fearing man, God allowed him to start the human race all over again. After building the ark and getting the humans and animals on board, the rains came. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Noah remained safe on the ark. He used a dove to check to see if the waters had receded. When a dove returned with a branch, Noah knew that the worst was over. The mystery and the power behind the story have made it very popular. The story of Noah's Ark is so famous that Hollywood even took an interest in the story. As the Ark became popular, many explorers have set out hoping to find what was left of the real Ark. There is some conflict, though, over the origin of the story. Some people believe that it was God's will to flood the Earth. Others think that it was the melting of glacial ice at the end of the Ice Age that caused the flood. Either way, though, most people do believe that most of the world was flooded at one time. An explorer named Robert Ballard believed that the Ark could have sunk to the bottom of the Black Sea when the waters receded. In 1989, he set out to try and prove his theory. He gathered a team to explore hundreds of square miles beneath the Black Sea. He discovered a 7,000-year-old settlement that had been destroyed by floodwaters. It was an incredible find, but it wasn't what he was looking for. There were no signs of the Ark on the floor of the Black Sea. He came up empty-handed, but he wasn't the last person to search for the ship. There are two blurry government photos of Mount Ararat, which is said to be the resting place of the Ark. People who really invested in finding the Ark believe that what's left can be seen in those photos. In 2004, a businessman named Daniel McGivern he wanted to explore Mount Ararat. Unfortunately, the Turkish government denied him access. Another team searching for the Ark went up to the Alborz Mountains in Iran. There they found an enormous blackened ruin. They believed that could be the Ark, but others were sure that it was just a mineral deposit. Many people who claimed to have found the Ark had their finds debunked or even outright called hoaxes. One archaeologist stated, I don't know of any expedition that ever went looking for the Ark and didn't find it. But in 2007, things changed. That year, a group from Hong Kong called Noah's Ark Ministries International, or NAMI, traveled to Mount Ararat. There they found something many archaeologists can't explain. After traveling 13,000 feet up the mountain, the NAMI explorers found large wooden components buried in the ground. When they investigated the ruins, they discovered something else strange. The materials located were tested using radiocarbon dating, and the age of the wood was 4,800 years old, which does go in line with the time the Ark was built. While this is enough for some to believe the find really is Noah's Ark, others disagree. According to skeptics, the wood found isn't old enough. Because God created the world, according to young earthers, 6,000 years ago. That means that the wood should date back more than 4,800 years. Others believe it's not the actual Ark for another reason. Mount Ararat being the Ark's final resting place is a modern concept. The Bible just says the mountains of Ararat. It doesn't specify which mountain. Some scholars believe the structure could be an ancient shrine dedicated to where the Ark could be. If that's true, the world would be much younger. It's because the Bible had not yet been written 4,800 years ago. Although the findings have not been corroborated, Turkey petitioned the United Nations to list the structure as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The petition didn't go through, though, but NAMI stuck to their original story. While NAMI is sure they have found the wrecked Noah's Ark, 
other people believe that it's still out there elsewhere to find. Today, many explorers are still trying to find the actual wreck, thinking that Nami's find isn't old enough. Nami believes that the real Noah's Ark may have just been uncovered and it's just throwing people off guard. Others are still out there hoping to find the real one. And subscribe for more!